Hey what's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is the PC centric portable rig. It's a PC that while it's pretty powerful it's pretty easy to move around. A friend came to me the other day and he said look I want to get into PC gaming I want to be able to play some of the latest PC games. I'm not really that fussed about how good they look. I don't really want to be able to spend a load of money on the highest end graphics cards. I just want a PC that will be able to play all the games but I have to move from place to place and I need one that's portable. So this is quite, well this is the case for a lot of people really, including myself. Just because you can fit a big tower PC inside your home doesn't mean that's going to make it very really easy to move around, it's going to be quite the opposite. And just because you can get a small PC, it doesn't mean that it's going to hamper your experience in any way. In the majority of cases you are literally going to be able to fit all the parts you want to fit inside. So why do you need anything bigger? So like always I'll be going through a list of parts that's going to be great for this sort of build. Of course feel free to leave anything in the comments below if you think that I should have done something differently and of course it will vary from person to person. This is the rig that I will hopefully be building for my friend but everyone's different so without further ado let's get on with the parts. Now the first thing is the case and in this case it's the Air 240 by Corsair. Now this probably is one of the best looking cases I've ever seen, let alone a good looking case in Micro ATX form factor. Because it's Micro ATX if you want, you'll be able to build really high end PCs in here with two graphics cards, but in this case we're not going to do that. That said, it's dual chamber design makes it very easy to build in, it's got loads of space for loads of different things, and because of that nice windowed side panel and dual chamber design, it's going to have good airflow, but the main thing is you're going to be able to see all your parts nice and clearly without any cable clutter. Now next up is the motherboard and for this we've gone for an H97 one by MSI. You can find the full sort of model number below. Now it's a no frills board, there's not really anything stand out about this board other than the fact that it's available at a really good price. Performance isn't going to vary too much from board to board, you aren't really going to notice it. Things like your graphics card and CPU are going to make much more of a difference. And if you want, you can actually add an additional sound card in as well. But for this, we're just going to go with the onboard sound. And on that motherboard, of course, we're going to need a processor, a CPU. And we've gone for the 4370i3. Now, it's not the most powerful CPU in the world. It's only a dual core. It's got quite a nice, decent turbo clock, though. And it's not going to bottleneck pretty much any of your games at this price point. That's going to happen with the graphics card. So we don't need to worry about spending loads of money on a processor. That said, this is going to be fine for most everyday tasks. It is better than the Pentium, it can't be overclocked, but that means it's going to be very easy for everybody to actually literally build this PC without having to worry about voiding their warranties and things like that when they overclock. We're going to use the stock cooler that comes with the i3 processor, and as for the RAM, we've just gone for a single stick of 8GB Kingston 1600MHz RAM. The reason I've gone for this is just because at the moment it's the best value. Kingston are pretty good and they're actually their Kingston Beast is always the RAM that is normally featured at the moment in some of the more powerful builds just because they represent the best value for money and this one is no exception. A single stick of 8GB is going to be fine for pretty much anything you need to do but if you need to upgrade in the future then of course you can go up to 32GB if we're using 8GB sticks. As for the graphics card we've gone for the Nvidia 750 Ti. This card is so powerful for its size, it's very energy efficient as well if you get one that's more reference design, it doesn't actually have any PCIe power connectors because it doesn't need them, which means that it gets all its power from the PCI lane, which makes it incredibly energy efficient. If you're running 1080p, then realistically you don't need any more than this card. It will run pretty much any game you like at high settings at 1080p, and depending on the game, it will run obviously anywhere between 30 and 60 frames a second, which is very good. And at this price point, you really aren't going to need anything more. For storage we've gone for the classic combo, I've said it before and I'll say it again, we've got to the point now where SSDs are so cheap that there really is no excuse for not having one, they make such a big difference to your PC and completely transform the experience. If you take one thing away from these videos it's that you really do need an SSD. Sure your budget might not be that high but trust me it is definitely worth the upgrade. So we've gone for 120GB Kingston V300 SSD and a 1TB Western Digital Blue hard drive. One thing for games, that big hard drive with the mass storage, and then the other one, the smaller SSD, for all your programs and a couple of games as well. I personally am still running a 120GB SSD and I've got the whole Battlefield 4 or 50GB 
of it on there, as well as another game, can't remember what it was, it used to be Watch Dogs, that was removed, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, that's what it is, so you can fit a couple of your favourite games on here, no problem, and obviously you've got then got that mass storage for everything else. Now this rig is so energy efficient, we don't really need anything particularly meaty, so we've gone for the modular, well, semi-modular, CX430M by Corsair. It's very good value for money, pretty much again a no-frills power supply, but you don't need anything more at this price point, and it's going to have limited cables which is going to neaten up your PC further. If you are going for a more expensive graphics card, then it is of course worth noting that you should be looking at a 500 or 600 watt power supply. And then of course lastly we're going to need a copy of Windows, and we've gone for Windows 8.1. It is the best operating system out there at the moment, at least in the Windows architecture. Is that the right thing to say? I think it's the best version of Windows, it's what I use. It's got some of the best features out there. Sure, it's got a horrible start menu, but you can get rid of that. You never need to look at that. And the additional features behind the hood are worth it, especially nowadays things like the desktop scaling when using high resolution monitors. Windows 7 just wasn't built for that, and as a result, it doesn't do that very well at all. And that brings us to the end of the video and to the end of the rig. Now, it's very well priced, but then again, this is quite a low priced budget build. It is, again, quite a no-frills thing, but that's not to say there's anything wrong with that. It's a very powerful machine, and it's going to be able to play any game you like at 1080p. High to ultra settings between 30 and 60 frames a second, which is what most of us are running. I run a monitor that goes up to 120 frames a second, so I need a little bit more juice. But realistically, I could quite happily use this rig for pretty much everything I do. If you're wondering how much this costs, it costs £587 here in the UK and $765 in the US. So it's a very good price point. You're definitely going to be getting a lot for your money. This is definitely one of the best value rigs I've ever done. And because it's so small, you're going to be able to take it very easily in the car or even ship it via freight or courier if you need to as well. It's very small, it looks great, and it's going to be able to run all your games. What more do you need? So thank you very much for checking out this video. There's loads of great stuff coming out. If you haven't already noticed, it's game season and pretty much my channel has been filled with game reviews at the moment. That's not going to change. Obviously be sure to check them out. I do spend a lot of time on them and I hope you enjoy them. Plenty more PC-centric rigs coming. I know you guys like them and I'm sorry there haven't been any for a while, but let me promise you that they are definitely on their way. There's a couple of surprises coming up as well and I'm not just saying that there is quite a lot of exciting stuff coming up on this channel as well. So stick with it, subscribe if you haven't already for more PC centric rigs like this as well as other videos on PCs, gaming and technology. If you like this video, you know what to do by now. Hit the like button if you didn't, hit the dislike button but either way let me know in the comments what you did or didn't like about the video and then I can get better for next time. This is better than normal TV. You can tell me what you do or don't like which means that you're going to get better content and hopefully I'm going to get more viewers. So thank you so much for watching this video as always and I will see you in the next one.